Hello everyone, I'm Jack Fisher and welcome to my world. And when you've been reading comics as long as I have, you learn to sense an emerging gem from the get-go. Unlike other comics I've covered, these ones don't slip under the radar. And they aren't some forgotten, underrated series either. They just have that special something that makes it work from the very beginning. And you know it's going to be a hell of a gem when it all comes together. So if your comic book senses are sharp enough, you're not the least bit surprised when it becomes a big hit. In fact, seeing a true comic gem blossom before your eyes just makes it that much more satisfying. That's exactly how I felt about Spider-Gwen when she first debuted in 2014. I knew the moment I read Edge of the Spider-Verse 2, the comic she debuted in, that she was a star in the making. I also knew I wasn't alone. That issue sold out fast at my local comic shop, so much so that some people actually fought over it. But some gems are worth the extra bruises. Spider-Gwen is definitely one of them. Since that fateful issue, her star has only risen higher. Gwen Stacy was already a beloved character among Spider-Man fans. Spider-Gwen just took it to another level. Aside from someone like Kamala Khan, I've never seen a character grow in popularity as rapidly as she has. Months after her debut, I saw Spider-Gwen cosplayers at comic book conventions. She quickly went from being just another alternate universe Spider-Man character into a central figure in Spider-Man lore. And the movie Into the Spider-Verse made her a bona fide movie star. I argue that she stole the show in that movie in every scene she was in. But as great as she was in that movie, it's in the comics where Spider-Gwen really established herself as a true gem of a character. And of the many stories she has been part of since her debut, Spider-Gwen Most Wanted still has a special glimmer to it. It's the first story that unfolds in her 2015 solo series. Written by Jason Latour with art by Robbie Rodriguez, this book takes Gwen Stacy's story beyond her origin. Now those with a basic understanding of Spider-Man know those origins already. She was just a normal teenager, going to a normal high school and dealing with normal teenage melodrama. Then, one day, she gets bit by a radioactive spider and gets superpowers. That story has already been told time and again with Peter Parker, but that story takes a unique turn with Gwen Stacy, and Spider-Gwen Most Wanted expands on that uniqueness. Gwen's journey to becoming Spider-Woman is considerably different from Peter's. Yes, it still involves themes of great power and great responsibility. It simply explores those themes in a different way. In essence, Peter ends up playing the part of Uncle Ben in Gwen Stacy's story, dying in an accident that Gwen blames herself for. And to some extent, that blame is not misplaced. Spider-Gwen Most Wanted builds on the consequences of that tragedy. Peter, in his desire to be special like Spider-Woman, experimented with a dangerous formula that turned him into the lizard. It was hard enough on Gwen that she couldn't save him, but to make matters worse, the police in her world hold Spider-Woman responsible for his death. Her father being a cop only complicates that even more. He's tasked with bringing Spider-Woman in, not knowing that Spider-Woman is his daughter. Whereas Peter Parker only had to worry about his sweet Aunt May, Gwen now has to deal with an overprotective father who also happens to be a hard-nosed cop. Even with spider powers, that's a daunting challenge for any teenage superhero. And in this world, she doesn't just struggle to balance her superhero life with her personal life. She has to navigate all this while her own father leads the police in a very public effort to arrest her. The challenges she faces, as well as the drama that ensues, is unlike anything you'll see in another Spider-Man comic. On top of all that, there's another threat looming in the midst of all this drama, namely the emergence of another lizard. But it's not the same monster that Peter died turning himself into. This is a very different lizard, courtesy of another familiar Spider-Man character. Now, I won't spoil who it is, I'll just say it rubs excess salt in Gwen's still fresh wounds. Her ability to deal with all this, while still being a hero worthy of going by Spider-Woman, is a testament to her character. It's also a testament to Latour's unique take on Gwen Stacy. She still has the traits of this sweet, lovable, caring girl who died so tragically in Peter Parker's arms. But Spider-Gwen Most Wanted helps her become her own character. Like so many other Spider-Men and Spider-Women, that fight includes its unique share of obstacles. In her world, Frank Castle isn't a gun-toting vigilante. He's an obsessive, ruthless cop. And Mac Murdock isn't some blind, justice-seeking vigilante. He's an agent of the Kingpin. 
These variations in Gwen's world aren't gimmicks. They're challenges that tests her ability to be the hero she wants to be. Spider-Gwen Most Wanted is just the first step in that journey. It explores how, in and out of her costume, Gwen is still so young and inexperienced. However, it never feels like she's an immature teenager. Her personality is still very different from Peter. Now she still makes her share of wisecracks and quips, but her hero's journey carries a unique set of burdens. More than anything else, Gwen comes off as a teenager who's had to grow up way too quickly. A lot of what happens is beyond her control, especially in the beginning. But as the story progresses, Gwen makes a handful of fateful choices that help chart the course of who she's going to be as Spider-Woman moving forward. The biggest, by far, comes at the end. Again, I won't spoil it, but it sets the tone for the unique drama that Gwen Stacy must navigate in this unique world of hers. Fighting crime and saving the day is only ever half the battle. She has to deal with the death of Peter Parker, clear her name, and fight to become a hero in her own right. And that's a lot for any teenage superhero, but it brings out the best in her and others around her. As Spider-Gwen Most Wanted plays out, you can't help but empathize with her struggle. She's trying to be responsible in a world where everyone else is just so damn irresponsible. It almost hurts her at times to be the responsible one in this world, but that just makes you love her even more. And if Into the Spider-Verse didn't make you love Spider-Gwen, then Spider-Gwen Most Wanted certainly will. If not, then you're just being difficult and a little irresponsible. Spider-Gwen, Spider-Woman, Ghost Spider, whatever you want to call this version of Gwen Stacy, she's special. She's a gem in her own right, and Spider-Gwen Most Wanted is a testament to her radiance. I encourage Spider-Man fans of all kinds to add this gem to their collection. And as always, I provided a link to Amazon and Comixology in the description below. Thanks for watching, everyone. And thanks for joining me in my world. Please do the responsible thing. Like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, take care and stay safe.